how to install an SSD inside of an enclosure. There are hundreds or thousands of enclosures. I particularly got this type C, 3.1, 10 Gbps, you can get higher. This is a relatively weak, slow SSD. I got this for 25 bucks, I think on sale. This is an NVMe, so you wanna pay attention if it's a SATA, S-A-T-A, or NVMe. You can also tell sometimes by the pin count, sometimes this arc is over here on the SATAs. Sometimes the SATAs have six pins instead of the five pins right here. If the enclosure supports NVMe or SATA, you're good to go. So you just wanna make sure that you have that correct. This particular one came with a casing like this. It's empty, but it does have a tiny little cover bunch of screws which I'll show and these will all be different so this is just a generalization should come with a tiny screw driver but if it doesn't this is probably a one or two or something and this is the board you'll be inserting it here and there's the type C output and this is a heat sink they may not all come with this but you want to get one with a heat sink and inside I have already placed the thermo conductor transference sort of gel pad Theoretically, you want it to stick to the SSD, but I have already used this before and popped the old one out. You can see both ends here. This is the part that will be mounted with the little screw, and this is the part that goes in. For some that may be obvious, but for some people who've never done this, it can be daunting if you're not tech savvy. You want to line up the groove with this groove here. So you can see there's a tiny groove there. I'm gonna place it in. It's going to sit at an angle, something like this. So I'm gonna push it in. I'm putting the pressure this way, going towards the back. Let it rest like this, and I'm going to just give it a little bit more pressure to make sure it's in. It is in. So eventually it's going to fold down like this and sit. Now the way this works here is that gap you're going to fill with a tiny brass spacer. It may be hard to see on here. Indented, it has a little indented groove. That groove is going to sit on the space here something like that and you're going to place that down you'll know if your if your ssd is not in the correct orientation because this will not line up with the screw hole now you never want to force any of these screws on here because they're so tiny you'll just strip them out you'll have separate screws for each thing now all these screws here are the same they're little tiny silver ones so all the screws for this board are the same I, if they are different on your setup, you want to keep them separated. I'm going to place it in there the best I can. Is it really small? And then just slowly thread it while putting pressure on the back. Notice the perpendicular angle here, like this. Could be like this, it could be like this. You want it completely perpendicular. So put pressure into the screw directly head on. That will ensure you do not strip these little things. So I'm putting pressure just like this and then I'm going to just make sure it's tight. That's it. It's good to know with everything. Now that's in. This may be it for some people in some cases, some enclosures. This one has a heat sink. This is a little bit of a tricky part because you have to visually see the screw hole and try to line it up with this. So I'm gonna do like a sandwich here and try to line it up as best I can. That one looks to be right. So you wanna make sure it sits flush. Some heat sinks you may have to actually slide the, the SSD in first, which would be odd, but keep that in mind so I did the best I could you can see I'm just slightly off here and the thermal gel pad may enable it to stick and that may cause trouble trying to situate it but just move it around so you see the screw holes line up and then have fun trying to place these in here without knocking them off I'm going to go at a cross pattern here one thing to note is if you're having trouble screwing these in Start by going left, go left. I know that's to loosen, but that will usually set it in the threads and then start going right. If you're screwing it in and it's misthreading, so go all the way left in at least a 360 and it should set it unless the hole is out of sync with the threads. Don't drink coffee before doing this so you can have steady hands. <laughs> Make sure that these are all good. You can give them a double check if you'd like, but I, Made sure they were nice and tight off the bat. Shouldn't have a lot of movement once it's in. So this is all set to go. If you really want, you can test this before securing it in there, but just do not touch any of this 
especially with anything metal, while you're testing it with live power. Here's the enclosure. One side's sealed, one side's not. You'd notice these two threaded things on the side. Does it matter which way you stick this? Probably not on most of them. So I'm going to line up the bottom like that. It's going to go in like that. So the board, the SSD board is going to sit right below the slot. It's going to slide in with a bit of pressure because of the heat sink is going to touch this. This is also going to act as a bigger heat sink. Once this is in here, you see this little tiny LED here. This is a tiny LED. If you look on this, it has a tiny hole. So you want to put that tiny hole. So there are two holes for the screws and there's one big hole for the type C and there's a tiny hole. Make sure that tiny hole is on the side with the LED or else it's useless. So the hole is on the bottom and it's lined up with the LED as close as possible. Now the two different types of screws on here are black and smaller and that should give you a clue that these go here. Your enclosure will probably come with excess parts. Mine came with a separate set of screws for each section and another brass spacer. Make sure you don't put that spacer underneath the SSD. People tend to do that because that gap will be too large and damage it. That little groove is where it sits in between. These don't have to be overly tight. Just make sure they're in there snug. You may strip these out. These are tiny screws. This is now good to go. You can shake it, make sure nothing's loose. Just for reference, this did come with an extra pad. So the pad has a little plastic cover on it. You want to remove that before you stick down the heat sink. I'm sorry I didn't show that, but it's pretty simple to figure out. And here are the extra parts. And this came with a Type-C to Type-C and also a Type-C to Type-A USB. So this is quite nice. And I think you can get a lot of these for around $15. And they will come with instruction manuals. But if you're like most people, you go to YouTube and you figure out how to do it. <laughs> Although it's pretty intuitive if you want to do it yourself. Thank you for watching. Hope that helped and subscribe for more. See you in the next video.